Hey, everybody, and happy Wednesday to you, and welcome to what is going to be an amazing conversation. I am here today with John Neal, who we'll learn a little bit about John and what he does here in a moment, but I didn't want to forget to say to all of you teachers out there, happy Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, lots of things going on. I've seen a lot of things posted on social. I know in my school, we've had a lot of really nice things brought in for us tomorrow. I believe there's even a coffee truck in the parking lot. So what is better than that? But thanks to all teachers um, out there for all that you do. I'm thankful for all the teachers that I had throughout my life as well. So enjoy the rest of this week. And today, I am excited because we're going to be talking all about moat. And if you have not yet heard of Moat, I'm going to highly encourage multitasking while you are here with us today or while if you are joining in later on and watching the recording. You need to open up and find out how to get started with Moat right here, right now, because this is your chance to find out what is Moat, what can I use it for, and our focus today is going to be on accessibility. But before we dive in, Really quickly about me, I am Rochelle Denae Poth, and I love education, I love learning. I am an educator, author, attorney, consultant, and I'll be kind of leading in facilitating this discussion today, but I'm going to leave all of the amazing learning experiences and sharing that's going to happen to John and our panelists. But before that, I'm gonna kick it over to you, John. How about you let everybody that's joining in, let us know who you are, what you do, and then we'll get started. Thank you so much, Rochelle. What a wonderful introduction. And I should say as well, most importantly, a very happy Teacher Appreciation Week to everyone tuning in now or maybe watching a little bit later on demand. Uh, so yeah, as Rochelle says, my name is John. Um, I am uh, part of the team at Moat. My role is the VP of Education. And that basically means I do everything from um, looking to engage with our community, trying to activate them, trying to find out ways that we can best support teachers and their learners, and also um, joining in with things like visiting conferences all over the world. And before that, I've been a teacher of 17 years in subjects as far ranging from PE to economics to computer science and design with a bit of school leadership thrown in for good measure. So um, as I say, really thrilled to be here today. Thanks, Rochelle. Yeah, and I'm going to give a shout out to those that I see already joining us today, and we hope that you will invite some others to join us as well. And I did, I shouldn't forget that I am lucky to have met John in person after mm. we've known each other for a while and had some conversations, but we had a chance to catch up. And uh, when I learned about the work that you've done in education, I, I was amazed and I just thought, oh my goodness, you have such a varied experience that you're bringing into the work that you do. And just hearing it again now, I felt the same way. Like I forgot about all that you did. And I remember just walking with you in the convention center, talking about those experiences mm -hmm. and relating like with my STEAM students and talking about technology and what we can do as educators for our students that help us to be better, that help to prepare them for the future. And so uh, it's, it's interesting like what we can learn from the connections that we make and how important it is that we do connect with others. So Anyway, we will get started. And for anybody who's wondering, like, what are we doing here today? Well, we're going to talk about moat and primarily accessibility. And for anybody who's looking, especially at the end of the school year, your school year is winding down. Uh, you've been thinking about trying something different in your classroom. You're looking for that one tool, that one solution, a method, a strategy, something that you can bring into your classroom space that will be really beneficial, not just for, of course, your students, but for you and how you provide for your students and beyond, then you have come to the right place. And we're going to learn all about that, but not just from John, because we do have some <laughs> expert educators that I will be bringing up very shortly to share their experiences and give you tons of ideas. So I mentioned before multitasking. So you might have to do a little bit more, maybe grab a piece of paper and a notepad and write down some ideas. Um, think about things that you can use in your classroom. And if you're not in the classroom, if you're an administrator, a tech coach, anybody, any role in education, think about how you could use this tool that you're going to learn about in the work that you do and how you can share it with others. So with that, John, are you ready to get started? Rochelle, I'm <laughs> definitely ready to get started. Thank you. All right. So we're going to learn a little bit about what exactly is Moat. So, John, I'll turn it over to you. 
Thank you, Rochelle. Yeah, so for those of you that might be new to Moat, we are a Chrome extension, so a Google Chrome extension that in its simplest terms allows for super easy voice integration throughout Google's ecosystem. So everything from adding voice notes of feedback in Google Classroom to maybe dropping an audio file into a Google slide deck as a read along activity, or maybe, maybe one of your students is using slides as an e-portfolio. We also are very proud to support um, Google Forms integration. And most recently, we've rolled out um, embed codes that allows uh, voice notes to be shared to Google Sites and lots of other platforms, including Canva. And tomorrow, don't tell anyone, but we're expecting that we might be combining with a company beginning with W. So you have to wait and see and follow us on socials to find out more about that. Um, so I joined the team at Moat in February of last year, so February 2021. And the reason that I joined the team wasn't because I love the sound of my own voice. Uh, it was because I really, um, in my years of ed tech, have always tried to find tools, not only digital tools, but tools that served a purpose, that recognized that there was maybe a way in which a problem or a pain point for me or my colleagues could be addressed with uh, the pursuit of, an, pursuit of another tool. And that's actually how I came across Moat. And one of the things that not only myself, but that all of our team at Moat is super passionate about is doing our best to empower all learners to access their learning in a way that best suits their own unique abilities. We wanna make sure that we are trying to create a tool and trying to craft the tool as a response, as you'll see there, by listening and engaging with our community. We're really proud the way that that's grown and we have various programs. I'd really encourage people to check out and to join in. We have our Moat Teachers group on Facebook, which is a great place just to share ideas and learn, particularly if you're just getting started. We've got a really thriving Moat Certified Educator community. We actually, Rochelle, just went through the 2000 uh, barrier for that. So really, really pleased with how that's going. And then our pinnacle of uh, Moatness is the Moat Ambassador Program. And actually, everyone that's going to be joining us later uh, and much more exciting people than I are all part of the Ambassador Program. So looking forward to hearing from them. And then just as you can see finally there on this slide, what we try and do, because we're only a small team, we've got about 10 of us, is we try to make sure that what we do is as um, effective as possible in listening to the challenges, listening to the situations that educators are going through, and then trying to launch features or maybe even um, new twists to the product that are going to support and to help not only the teachers and the learners, but also, and I know this from my uh, previous role as a school leader, is that a tool is really great and has really good value when you can engage the wider learning community. So by that, I mean, how, how we can help you and your students use voice to engage with the parental community, so the folk at home. One of the ways that we do that is we offer very easy, um, uh, from our uh, voice notes that, that, for example, share to people at home, we offer very easy translation of those voice notes into the language of your choice. And we also have something I'd recommend that you check out, a learning hub, which you can follow just by going to learn.moat.com. We've got about 50 ideas ready to go for the class from everything from creativity to accessibility and lots in between. So that was what I wanted to share, Rochelle. Thank you. Yeah. And so one of the things, I mean, a lot of the things that, that you said stuck out with me and I'm sure with a lot of the people that are listening today, and, and it is that accessibility and talking about just picking one, the, the language, because when schools were closed, I have a lot of friends who teach in different schools where, you know, they are dealing with students and working with students and families who they're thinking like, how am I going to get this information and share it? They're using newsletters or whatever format they had. And knowing that at home, you know, English is not the language that is being spoken or they're dealing with in some schools, I know, and I'm not going to, to say who it is, but I know of a teacher who in their school, they have, I think, roughly 65% that are non-native English speakers. And the number of languages is somewhere in between 30 and 40 35 and 40 languages that are being spoken. So thinking about the different tools and being able to send the messages so that the students and the families at home that are supporting them can understand that is huge. And finding tools when there are so many options available that enable you to do that makes a difference. And so 
for anybody who has been listening, I'm sure that you've already learned by now how impactful moat is and can be, but you've only just begun to learn a little bit about it. And so if you do have questions, don't forget to let us know what your questions are. Uh, if you teach a specific grade level, content area, a different role in education that you have, drop the questions into the comments. We are here to answer your questions. And if not now, then don't hesitate to reach out to the team at Moat. John is fantastic. Reach out to any of the ambassadors, those that are here with us today. And we are happy to learn from you and also to learn right along with you um, as we go. So with that, John, do you think it's about time that we bring up, you know, a few other guests to join I us here it, today? I think, it is, I think it is the perfect time to bring out some extra guests. Okay, so I will bring our three amazing panelists up and we'll learn a little bit about who they are and what they do. And then we'll figure out what else can you do with Moat. So here comes Lois and then Stacy, and welcome to Alex. Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. Hey. And I will kick it off first for some introductions. So we already know who I am and John is, and I'm going to shift over to Lois. Oops, sorry. There you go, Lois. Hi, everyone. My name is Lois Alston. All good. Um, I'm an ed tech specialist in Long Branch, New Jersey. This is actually my 20th year in education, uh, my fifth year as a tech coach um, prior to being a technology um, coach. Uh, I was a math teacher for 15 years and also taught a few years, um, sixth grade every subject. So I am familiar um, kind of what is needed um, in the different content areas. Um, but in my role, I love um, my position because I get to work with teachers and students from pre-K all the way up to high school um, for about 10 different um, schools in my district. Uh, well, I am glad that you are joining today and a, a special message there. Thank you to Linda for joining us um, and happy to have you here. And I love, Lois, the, the experience that you bring too, because you do work with that band. And often some of the questions that come up, it's like, well, I, I know that you're using this in high school. How can I use this in elementary or I'm in elementary and you're using this in middle school? Like, what do I do? And so that's great that we have you with all of that experience to share with us. So welcome and thank you for being here with us today. And thank next, you for having me. Yeah, of course. I'm going to kick it over to Alex. Let, let us know where you're from, what you do and a little bit about yourself. Well, hello, everybody. Absolutely thrilled to be here. Uh, I'm a middle school math teacher, grade eight at Red Bank Middle School in Red Bank, New Jersey. I've been using Moat for just about over a year now. I got into it uh, last February and I, I just love what it's provided me and my students over at Red Bank Middle School. And I've, I've taught a variety of subjects, grade levels. Uh, but for me, the main thing that I am always keeping in mind is building that strong rapport with my students, you know, forming relationships mm -hmm. first, then getting into the math discussion and really just making memorable math moments for myself, my colleagues and my students. So I couldn't be more excited at the opportunity to discuss MOPE, which is a platform I'm very passionate about. And I just look forward to the conversation. Yeah. And I love that you are a middle school math teacher because just in my mind right now, I think I thought of three questions to ask you about it. But one, one comment just off that is if I would have had this when I was going through geometry in the ninth grade, what a difference it would have made for my teacher to be able to explain to me what I was doing to account for why I was getting the grades that I was getting because seeing explanations written on paper and not being able to like hear that, uh, would have made a huge difference. So looking forward to what you have to share with us today. And last but not least, Stacey, welcome. A little bit about you, what you do, and I uh, would love to learn from you. Thank you. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you today to be able to share, you know, something that all of us are really passionate about, Vote. Mm -hmm. um, and I am, I'm the director of innovation and educational technology at my school. So I get to, you know, look at all different tools and think about which ones to onboard as a school. Moat's been one that's been um, a very important piece of larger goals in terms of accessibility and giving voice in all different ways, which we will discuss in just a moment. And I'm also the author of Tech with Heart. And, you know, I published Tech with Heart before Moat was available, before it was created. Um, but if I were to write Tech with Heart today, I mean, Moat would definitely be one of those tools because when I talk about many of the same thing, themes that John was saying in our introduction about, you know, empowering every voice, 
to be able to give that feedback in a way that is very personal. It is about relationships. Um, and Moat is just a fantastic tool to make that so simple and easy for everybody. Yeah. And one other thing that I just thought of too is looking at, I mean, I'm a classroom teacher. I teach Spanish. I teach an eighth grade STEAM course. And each of us has a different type of experience that we're bringing to this conversation. And so for anybody who's joining in, you know, if you're using Moat in your classroom, in the work that you do, we would love to hear from you how you're using it um, to come up with new ideas, mm -hmm. because it is about the relationships too, not just in how we're using Moat and how that's helping us to build relationships and help us with learning and accessibility, but also just us here together in this group, we're learning from each other. I'm learning mm -hmm. from them and we want to learn from you because that's where the real power is in that community from all around the world because we're not in the same location here. And so thankful to the technology. Uh, and one other thing too, Stacey, what you said about the book, if, if you were to write it again, I could say the same thing. I would definitely be adding in <laughs> Moat into one of my books here that I have just because of all that it does offer. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, and I, I don't want to forget to mention, I'll mention it later as well, is there are some giveaways because it is Teacher Appreciation Week. So we have some giveaways may or may not involve some licenses, could possibly involve some books, but what you have to do, I'll be sharing across the ticker, hint, hint, probably following some panelists and Moat and maybe tweeting out how you might be using Moat or how you think you might use Moat. So Stacy, are you ready to dive on in? I yep. sure am. All right. So I'm going to share your screen and there we go. All right, so I'm gonna just share a couple of examples of why I have found such power in Moat. And I'm gonna start with teacher feedback. So I actually taught a purely online version of AP Calculus for a couple of years. And one thing that was really important to me was being able to add voice in to the feedback I was giving students. So there multiple ways of me doing that, multiple reasons I think it's so important. So first of all, is just to communicate tone. A lot of times, you know, especially when we're giving critical feedback to students, which is so important for their growth, but to be able to communicate that tone so that it's received in the way that we intend can be very difficult with text alone or, you know, writing math equations alone. Just being able to leave a simple little voice message alongside maybe something that I write out with math is extremely powerful. Um, and then for students to be able to communicate too through that. So that's something that I love and I'm going to talk about in a moment is that it's not a one directional thing here. It really is a communication stream, whether that's student to student or teacher to student. So feedback is the first thing that I wanted to highlight there. Um, and then Talking about accessibility and meeting students where they're at and allowing them to get some ownership over how they're listening to these things. Moat incorporates the ability to change the playback speed, even to add in transcription. So there are some features that are free. There are some features that are paid. Transcription is an added um, feature with a paid license, but so much of this is available also on a free license for everybody to get started. And that's something I always like to share because I know the power of trying out something free first and seeing if it works for you and your students and knowing that everybody can get on today. Like that's powerful stuff to me. So I hope that everybody who's listening will just hop on. It's free, get started, and then see what more is available, um, you know, with a school license or, or a subscription for yourself. And then it gives that ability to read and listen. And that was something that I was really looking for in a tool that I couldn't find before Moat, like the ability to read and listen, read or listen, um, I think is really powerful for students because people process in different ways. Like I think about, I'm an audiobook listener. I process better when I listen than when I read, which I know is the opposite of many people that I talk to. But I have choices now because almost everything is an audiobook. And I think that's very important. So 
let me just show when I talk about that playback speed here is like a, a, just a moat note that isn't embedded in any of the platforms. Um, when I press play, you'll see down here that it has right here, I can change the playback speed. And what I love too, is that it's not just speeding it up. 0.8 X speed is one of the speeds that you can choose. Yeah, I know that, especially with like some of the world language teachers that I work with, that sometimes students actually need to slow it down a little bit. And that's built in right here. 1X, 1.2, and 1.5. So this is great for students, also great for teachers when you're listening back to stuff that you can speed them up a little bit, right? Sometimes you do that. And then there's a back five seconds to be able to easily do that. There's also translation. Like we can't even get into all the features here, with the auto translation. Um, Everybody else will talk about other things that are available too, but this exact player can be built into a number of different platforms like Canvas, one of the new ones that it was built into. I made this little one for Teacher Appreciation Week and I was able to leave a little voice note right in there, clickable, viewable, right in the Canva um, embedded so beautifully. And again, it's with that transcription automatically. And then the last example that I want to show is the power of student communication for an asynchronous presentations example. So in this one, this was actually with one of our arts teachers, and she had students create a peer critique through Google Slides. So all of her students actually created one slide. Each student was responsible for making their slide. They put their image on it, obviously, and then they put a little note um, on right in the Google Slides to record like the artist statement right here. And then students were able to reply to one another. Um, in this example, I have up here, it was just text because it looked visually nice, but students had the choice of responding with text and also with moat comments so that they could respond with voice. And again, it was that idea of giving students choice. Um, one thing that was really powerful about this was that students were able to like engage longer with the slides that interested them. And then the last thing that I'll say is that moat comments also can be a very powerful way for building their slides. So as students are working on their presentations, they can use the comments on the side and they can use moat comments to be building the slides collaboratively with one another so that they can talk to one another asynchronously. So those are my main shares that I wanted to get into. Yeah, so I do have, I have a lot of questions for you, but there was one that did come in and Melody, thanks for joining us. And Melody said, so you can slow up, slow down and speed up. Which, yes. yeah, which is great. And I, I did laugh and I wonder if anybody else laughed whenever <laughs> certain messages, you know, that you're listening to and you're like, I'm just going to put it at like a one and a half speed because sometimes, I mean, we do, we tend to process things faster or if we have to get through a lot of them, we want to give students the feedback that is essential. Uh, but the biggest question I have for you, and it does, again, it's going to tie back into math, uh, especially like thinking, you know, calculus, but even I'll go back to the geometry, you know, what a difference that makes for students to one, if you just have, okay, this goes way back, but we didn't have the technology when I took those math courses a while ago. So we didn't have things online for us to look out for tutorials, of course, because the tech wasn't there. So I had a book and the book had sample problems. And while they were helpful and I could follow them, it wouldn't explain to me like, well, why I went from this step to this step. And so now you have Moat and you can provide that information to students and for students to be able to go through and listen to it over and over as many times as they want. I know I, for one, would have been slowing it down and listening to the step, especially a, a geometry or calculus at that point. Um, but the biggest question is, you know, when we look back over the past two years as we went into whatever learning environment, whether it was fully virtual, hybrid, uh, but even in person, but I'll stick to the virtual and hybrid how did you find that Moat enhanced accessibility? Um, or did you see that it was like, it was just so innovative because you could do all of these things where, you know, a lot of teachers felt like they really couldn't connect with the students. They couldn't provide that timely, authentic, meaningful feedback that's essential. You know, how did you see that change over time by using Moat? Yeah, and you know, I, I had that added advantage of having taught in an online environment, which, gave me just like a huge leg up because when I was designing that course, I could think about 
you know, the design of the lessons for that. And I had so much time to think about it. So this is something that I have thought about a lot and I was, I've been able to experience it for years um, that I think that, you know, this is something that I've seen. There's things that we saw lost after people came back face to face and there's things that we've seen remain. And this is one of those things that I've seen remain because the power of giving students that ownership over needing to listen to it, listen to it again, rewind. You know, I've been a flipped classroom teacher for years and years. And, you know, anybody who's flipped their class or is a flipped classroom teacher knows the power of giving students access to videos to watch and replay as they need it and find it at their own pace. And so this is an added layer, an added element, but something that's way simpler, right? Than saying like when we are making flip classroom videos, like it can be very time intensive. It can be hard to get started. It can be, you know, just a big shift. Like this is just such a like a magically easy way to get going right away. Like that's what I was trying to emphasize before. Like anybody can install this right now on their computer and get going with being able to add in just little bits, like little bits of what you were saying, like the little bits of clarification, a little bit of an introduction instead of just putting like text instructions, give some voice instructions for the kids who really might need that. Some of our younger learners, I mean, it might be the difference between them being able to get started and not being able to get started. Not to mention that sometimes it just feels more friendly and sometimes that is the barrier that kids need. And I think a lot of people saw that during pandemic learning was that kids were having like this huge barrier to entry because they were getting overwhelmed with things. Something like a simple voice message or like a simple check-in like, you know, with either personal or with the whole class and just saying something and acknowledging how everybody's feeling with the voice and adding that tone is really like, it's huger than something that I can just describe. I think that most people probably have experienced that now if, you know, <laughs> because of the pandemic learning. Yeah. And that, you know, hearing, like, like you say too, it's, it, well, I always say like the power of voice and it's one thing to write like year for years and years on tests given in my French or Spanish classes. I would take so much time to write down the feedback, like, here's how you do this, here's this step process, you know, all of this information and often like glanced at it and it was gone. But then when you have that explanation and sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard when you make mistakes, especially in learning, whatever it is. But I mean, in my case, a language and students look at it like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing or, oh, I'll never get this. But to hear your teacher giving you the feedback and explaining something to you and you're familiar with them and it's authentic, it helps them to push through that feeling of like, I'm not going to get this to be like, okay, my teacher is actually giving me personalized feedback and I can hear their voice and I feel comfortable with it. And that also gives them some confidence to learn. And so I just think, you know, if you're looking for teachers, for anybody who's out there looking for a way to really facilitate that conversation, especially like when we couldn't be in the physical classroom, which was so difficult and at that time to send a quick, message to your students that says, here's what you need to do, or here's what I'm thinking. And for students to be able to do that back as well and listen to it, in my case, as often as they would need to, to get them along. Mm -hmm. So um, anybody out there that's listening, if you have questions for Stacy or any of the panelists as we go through, don't hesitate to drop them into the comments because if not right away, we will come back to them. Uh, before we turn it over, to Alex, I'll just ask Alex or Lois, did you have anything that you wanted to add or speak to uh, or questions for Stacy? actually? Well, the first thing that I can say is I've been put to complete shame with an AP calculus teacher here. So, I mean, just being a pre-algebra teacher in middle school, I, I don't know why I'm being put to such shame tonight, but I'm purely kidding. Um, I think just some absolutely amazing ways to implement mode, especially I love seeing the new mode player in Canva being used. And I just think that that was such a lovely idea with a great personal touch, having that card written out to the teachers in your, at your school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And Lois, I didn't know if you wanted to. Yeah, same here. I just, um, I like the different features that you are showing, uh, Stacey, uh, especially with the students that you're working with. And it's a great way for other teachers that haven't been using Mo or trying to figure out other ways to use it to be able to implement it into their classes. 
Yeah. And the one thing that I'll say, you know, when we look at technology, there's all kinds of tools that we can choose from. And it can be absolutely overwhelming for us as educators, but of course, for our students, for the families that are at home, for supporting them. And always think about like, why? Why are you looking for some technology to bring into your classroom? Or what is something that takes up a lot of your time? Or for me, years ago, it was a disconnect. And for this, you know, if you're thinking, you know, I really wish I was able to give more authentic and meaningful and timely feedback to my students or to actually explain it to them one on one and for them to be able to go back and listen to it again, rather than trying to find that paper where I wrote the feedback on that was lost, then this is your opportunity to go and get started with Moat right now. And if you have questions, of course, don't hesitate to reach out to Stacy about that. So thank you to Stacy for sharing. And Alex. Are you ready? Because Alex is going to take us into another direction here with Moat, because like I said, it, there's a lot that you can do with Moat, and we're focusing on accessibility, but other ideas along the way. So are you ready? Michelle, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. Let's get going. All right. Here we go. Off to you, Alex. All right. So thank you so much, Rochelle. Uh, you know, again, absolutely thrilled at this opportunity and I hope people can take something away from this. I do plan on releasing some of these templates. I already have released some of these templates. So I hope that these might be useful to you as we conclude a, a very long school year. So for me, the way I started with Moat last spring was I decided, you know, I wanted to make my math note slides much more interactive, much more helpful to my students as a result of kind of bouncing out in between hybrid and remote and virtual instruction. So I was always trying to make it where there are certain aspects of pre-algebra that can be very challenging, uh, considering students had already experienced the prior year um, post-pandemic or with the pandemic occurring. Um, there, there were some instances where I, as Stacy said, I have to meet them where they are. And being able to embed audio directly in. And for anybody who was trying to do this on Google Slides before, you know what a big to-do it was to get your MP3 into Google Drive and then bring it in. Well, Mode is two clicks once you install the extension. And all it's done for me is allowed me to elevate my, my grade eight math class. So again, I started very simply with taking the Mode audio uh, insert function with Google Slides, which you can see right over here in this top corner where if you simply click on that and then one more click, I don't want to do that because I'm scared my audio might cut out. You literally then have your moat icon being inserted directly into your note slides. So all of those purple sound icons, those are me offering explanations to my students to provide them that level of ownership when they're away from me. I want students to be able to always have my guidance, my explanations with them, even if they're not in class in front of me. And what Moat has allowed me to do is really have that connection with them and provide that level of accessibility at a whole new level. So as you can see in this one, I was providing explanations underneath to the values of each of those exponential terms in the top row. So I then continue on offering either just a, a quick reading of the line because I have many L's in my classes where I have a bilingual classroom and I have students who really love using that translation transcription feature that Moat has. But it just really allows students to kind of have me walk them through these slides without, you know, screencasting or otherwise. I think that, you know, having to sit and watch a video for an extended period of time, that can kind of wear on somebody. Whereas what I'm doing here is I'm chunking up my explanations where students have the opportunity to bounce around these slides, perform extra practice and then get my feedback. Uh, have me read them the definitions of their terms, provide them examples, non-examples, just really elevate my material for them to provide them with that extra level of support. So, you know, this is where I started. I, I have now uh, implemented embedding it into audio. I, I even in, included it in a, in a digital card that I, that I sent to my partner, Lois, uh, this past Christmas, where I wanted to have that level of connection with her and, and I was able to do that with Moat. So it's not purely for my professional career. I use it to you know, message my, uh, my, the, the guardians and parents of the students who I tutor, where instead of having to type out a long detailed message, I can simply send them my, my thoughts about how the, how the hourly session went. But in addition to that, one thing that I'm extremely passionate about is creating virtual classrooms. So you know, if anybody follows me on Twitter, you have seen this classroom many, many times in recent weeks. However, I'm extremely proud of it. 
Uh, it was my first classroom being made with Canva. And what I really do want to showcase on this is that, A, there's a lot of different things that you can click on. And as a result of that, I enjoy the ability to provide a moat note. So what I did is I created this little laptop player down here. And what my moat message is, is an explanation of all the variety of PNGs. Uh, Jojo in the bottom left corner bringing you to a countdown to summer break, expressing that there's a Cinco de Mayo. Uh, a history.com article that I'm going to pull up in reference to that special holiday to my students, especially tomorrow. And it's just, I really just love the fact that this is one of the new integrations with Moat. And Stacy shared her card to the teachers in her, at her school. I'm sharing my Moat message with, with my students and their families where, you know, this is, me, this is my one-stop shop where also on the next page, I'm providing homework, classwork for my students, where I'm embedding a Moat message directly in that their families, they can then get a, a direct translation from that in real time that they're able to use to then better understand what they're looking at with this virtual classroom. So they've been, emote messages have been embedded into my virtual classrooms since last spring. I started with my March classroom. I've been absolutely thrilled with the results since, making it more accessible to my students and their diverse skills and needs. And, and it's just really elevated my ability to provide great math instruction. And even though we're all in person now, I am still really utilizing Moat to the fullest. Now, the last thing that I, I really do want to kind of showcase is this certificate uh, template that I created for my students at Red Bank Middle School. Uh, last year, I really feel like my students needed a boost. And when we were getting into the dog days of, of March and April, I created a Mr. Isaac's Three Star Series. And, and, and Moat has now become a part of that for me this year. So I've named two cohorts so far. I have a Moat QR audio code, which you can see in the bottom. Now, this is my generic template. This does not have the personalized feedback I left to Mike, Angel, and Dulce. But at the same time, if you're at home right now, scan it right now with your phone and, and take a look what you'd be able to do to elevate your end of the year certificates for your students to if you have uh, uh, parents who are multilingual at home or they're needing a translation, you know, you could send a remind message out, you could send a class dojo message out, but with a moat message, they're getting the intonation in your voice. You're able to really personalize it for your students. And not only that, it's also really fast. I mean, if I look back to when I was a STEM teacher, right when COVID started, the amount of Google Classroom messages that I sent to students in first to eighth grade when I could have simply clicked on one button and added Moat audio notes in to provide that genuine, authentic feedback, that's the day that I wish I could go back to, to really add it in. It may not be tech with heart, but for me, that's the thing that I look back on that really Moat would have made a big impact for me. So since then, I just want to provide great feedback to my students, and, and I'm so proud of this template being able to really get in there and, and have something that I laminated the certificates for my students. If they ever want to hear me talking to them, you know, when they go to high school and beyond, they want to remember this math moment. They have that ability. They'll hear my voice and they'll have a translation for their family. So those are the three main things that I wanted to highlight. And I couldn't be more thrilled with the ability to ju just provide that level of personalized feedback where, I've received such amazing thank you notes from my students because of me saying, hey, you did an amazing job on iReady. And I'm sending that to their parents as well. And it's translating in real time on the Moat landing page. So I, I couldn't have asked for any more. And I'll close with this. I had a student reach out to me from one of my classes. And, you know, she was very confused on one example. And I sent her an audio Moat message that took me about one minute to record and then plug in to a G-chat. And I asked after about 30 seconds, did that do the trick? And I got the emoji with the shades on and I got a thumbs up. And I, as a teacher, that just filled my heart because I realized, okay, this is a tool that is effective. It is impactful. And ever since then, I've just been trying to implement it in new and innovative ways. And I couldn't be more thrilled to be a part of Mo representing them right here tonight uh, with all of you. And, and, you know, I just love the opportunity to talk about ideas with Mo. So it, it's just so exciting to get this platform and be able to use it with my students at Red Bank Middle School. And I only look forward to implementing it in new and innovative ways with some of the new integrations that are coming down the pike. 
Yeah, well, there are, first of all, there are some comments coming in for you. Mel, uh, who's joining us, says, so awesome, Alex. And Thank you, Lin <laughs> yeah, and Linda uh, says that that makes math not look so overwhelming. And Linda, I absolutely agree with you. Anything about the math right now and seeing and having that explanation, I'm all there. And then Louis also says, loves the direct translation feature. And so with all that you showed, because what's interesting too is so often, you know, we're always using different tools in our classroom. Um, I had a conversation with a school district tech coach a couple of weeks ago, and I forget how many students are in their district, but it's a lot. It's somewhere over 20,000, and I forget the number of teachers, but within the district, there are somewhere around 400 different apps and platforms and things being used. And I love when you have a tool that you can do so much with, and that's what you're, you've clearly shown here, all the different ways that you can use Moat in varying forms. But of course, you know, I always have to give, I don't want to say the pushback, but people are going to say, oh, this is great. You know, I can record a quick message only for my students. And then there are going to people, be people who look at this and go, oh my gosh, look at all that he did with that on that, with all of those at the bottom and all of them throughout and think, I can never do that. So we, we hear about the learning curve because with so much involved in teaching, you know, it's like, is it just one more thing added on to it? So my question for you, because you do a lot and I see all that you do on Twitter. I don't know how you do it, but you explain it in a way that does make it feel like, oh yeah, I can do that. I just have to message Alex and Alex is going to either make it for me no, or walk me <laughs> through it. But for anybody who is thinking, you know, I could benefit, my students could benefit from that. What is the learning curve that is that comes with Moat, like getting started with some of the things that you've shared with us here today? I mean, it, it's absolutely minimal, Rochelle, and, and I appreciate your kind words. And, and I do what I do because I'm trying to get to the position that you're in and, and Stacy and John and everybody else, Lois. I'm trying to just do great things to help educators around the world. So I'm just excited. And for me, yes, it does appear overwhelming taking a look at all of these different audio messages and, you know, I, I wouldn't even expect anybody to go through these links. You know, this is me, myself, really just trying to provide so much explanation that students just don't have to go anywhere else. But as far as a learning curve, it is as simple as installing the extension, signing in, getting to know the platform a little bit or not. I mean, I became certified before really delving into using the platform and the certification course is excellent and very straightforward and meaningful. But for me, it's as simple as downloading the extension, pinning it to your toolbar, and then all of the different Google uh, umbrella apps, they're going to have it built right in where it's as simple as two clicks and you're able to add in audio messages. And it, it's just, they're adding more and more ways by the week to, to be able to incorporate it into different platforms. So, you know, it, I, can, I can do a very brief uh, tutorial right here where if you take the, the Chrome extension, you go to one of your recent moats, and then you're just simply clicking on this, and you can embed your moat right into Google Classroom. You can download a QR code. You can embed it onto different websites, or if you just simply want to have either a hyperlink or a link that you wanted to bring into Canva with the player that you saw, you just click on it, and it's copied, and you're ready to go. So the learning curve is minimal. I feel like all the different tech tools out there, moat is one that's really just – you install it and you're really ready to go. So I think that it's just a tool that everybody's able to use and the enhancements that it adds to your classroom, they're well worth it. So anybody hearing this, if you have not already installed the extension, do it. It is not overwhelming and you will be dropping more personalized, more authentic feedback to your students in no time. Yeah. And I, I was going to say, remember what I said earlier is like we're multitasking. So you want to go and get that extension and you just start, you don't have to do all the things. You just take that first step and you build upon it. But one of the other things I love about what you shared, Alex, as well, is like, you know, we, we create things and we, we reuse things in education, not saying that we pull out those folders from our filing cabinets and have the same lessons and do everything repeatedly. But if you're creating a lesson in math or whatever content area that you teach, the slides, like for me with verb conjugations, just to put in those explanations about the process of conjugating a verb. And then you don't have, you're not going to repeat that every single year, even though we repeat that, but 
you invest the time now and it does save you time later on, but the benefits of it far outweigh that time that it might take you to initially get set up. But uh, lots of great ideas that you shared and other comments coming in. Glenn said, great stuff, Alex. So very innovative, great ideas. And Linda, I definitely like the apps that are open-ended and I could not agree more with you, Linda. So Alex, thank you so much for sharing your ideas. And if you are just joining in, because I know we have some new people joining us today, we are talking about moat and accessibility. We're not done yet. We've had some great ideas shared by Stacey and Alex. And now we're going to kick it over to Lois. And if you have questions, drop them into the comments here on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, and we will get to them now or else later on. All right, Lois. Hi, everyone. Um, so I like to share with what I've been using uh, Moat for this year. I really started getting into Moat in September. Um, and how I started getting into Moat each um, month, um, Neil Mastriani, who's the other EdTech specialist um, in my district, we um, put out a monthly newsletter called the EdTech Wave. And in the EdTech Wave, we highlight one platform or tech tool uh, that we want to be able to share out to all the teachers um, in our district. And for September, we kicked off Moat because of the amazing accessibility features that Moat offers. And we really wanted to make sure that hopefully teachers were getting up and running in the beginning of the year um, using it. And so as a result, I ended up um, incorporating, and I'm gonna share with this right here. Uh, one moment. Okay. Can you see this okay? Yeah, I can see okay. your, your screen, yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so this is um, it, our, our front page of our EdTech Wave. Um, every month we have different um, color, the theme. And so to give you an idea, uh, this is what we had started off with in September. So we started off with a Google slide that links you to a Google doc that had every information that you need to have on how to get started with Moat. Um, and then right down here um, was an easy way for teachers to access the 60 days premium feature, as well as a QR Moat that we had included. As the time started to evolve, we ended up incorporating Moat messages in our newsletters when we were highlighting each different tech tool. So that way we could really be able to explain what the slide is all about as well as give a more personalized message on this slide using the Moat message. So here's an example when uh, we had showcase uh, Seesaw here, and then every month with the creative challenges uh, with Adobe, we have also been infusing Moat messages as well as um, Moat QR codes. And then over here, um, now with the um, integration with Moat um, into Wakelet, I had just started adding now um, the moat message where now it makes it really easy for anyone that's going on to the slides to really have a better understanding uh, with the moat player right here to see what the uh, message is all about, as well as the slides that we're showcasing for that month. So this has Lois, been a very, yes. yes. Lois, really quick. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's sharing right now. So yeah. I, I think you've got to pull up the slides on your end again. Maybe you got to do a reshare really quick. Oh, let me reshare. Yeah. My bad. No, that's, that's okay. okay. And I know that Lois's EdTech Wave newsletter. I mean, once once that she did Moat first one first platform this year as her EdTech Spotlight tool. So you know that just shows how passionate she is about Moat, mm -hmm. and you know it's just been delineated to her district, and they've just really hit the ground running so much. I know all about it. I know Lois will do a better job explaining <sighs> it. One moment. I apologize. Okay. No worries. Yeah, and I did grab your from the link in the presentation. So if anybody wanted to take because it's view only, you could open it up and multitask and check it out because it really is awesome what Lois has there um, to share with the EdTech wave. But just another example of what you can do. I mean, we've seen so many different possibilities so far. So thinking about your classroom, your role, you know, how could you use this? Are you a tech coach and you want to share ideas? with the teachers in your school, an administrator, and you wanna get teachers using a new tool. Um, those are just some of the possibilities that you can use. I have, let's see, let's, I'm gonna share with Stacy. there we go. 
There we but go. It, but it came through Stacey. Yes. So. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so here um, is an example, as I was showing with the slides right here. And unfortunately, it's not popping up. Let me so move. I'm controlling it. Would you like me to move to the next yeah, one? Yeah, if you don't yeah. mind going on yeah. to the next one, that would be great. So this is what I was showcasing before. This was for the month of September with our tech tool. This was our Google slide that we had for Moat that was connecting to the Google Doc right here. Um, and then we had the premium feature. So Stacey, if you don't mind going down to the last slide. So this here with Moat being now integrated with Wakelet, I was able to the other day um, put in my Moat message that I wanted to be able to share to explain, um, in this case, it was GimKit for April. So, so that way all the educators that were going onto the slide had a better idea about GimKit, but they were able to have a better, more personalized message through using Moat. Again, that whole accessibility uh, feature right there. So we found, um, Neil and I, that created these um, slides each month for our digital newsletter, we found that Moat was the greatest way to really be able to explain each month our newsletter and what we were trying to share out to uh, our staff. And so the other thing that I want to share, if you don't mind going back to um, the slide over, perfect, thank you so much. Uh, so the other thing that I've been working with as a tech coach, I work with all the different school buildings and one of the elementary schools uh, with the theme bulletin boards for um, Black History Month, every teacher had to create outside their own bulletin board and on their bulletin board with the person that they had selected, they were able to um, use QR modes um, to have little um, messages as teachers were walking around the building with their students. So one of the things that was encouraged by the principal was to have classes to walk around the building and to really learn um, the different people that were being displayed for Black History Month. And so uh, the teachers end up doing QR mode. So it was kind of a little bit of a scavenger hunt at the same time, but it was great for the, the young learners, the early grades to be able to hear. And it basically brought the bulletin boards to life. And so instead of just walking around and just looking at it, now they were able to listen to not only the teachers leaving a moat message, but even students were leaving moat messages and putting them onto the bulletin boards. So it was a great way to bring both teachers and students together and the whole school community. And that's what I really love about moat is that it's very powerful in the way that it can really bring a whole school together. And they did the same thing for Read Across America uh, with Dr. Seuss, there was like little clues that they use with the QR modes. Um, and then the other thing is the positive QR mode messages. So at the middle school in Long Branch, we have on the teacher floor uh, for each of the rooms, we have a little bit of a teacher shout out. So one of the um, teachers, Miss Ambissi, she put together the shout out board. And so as a result, QR modes have now been implemented as well. So Teachers are writing out messages, but they're also leaving QR modes uh, for audio uh, messages. And so this is just a great way to, again, bring that bulletin board to life um, and for just to hear that message instead of always reading a message. And the last thing that I'd like to um, share, and this is something that both Alex and I have come up together and we're very proud of. Uh, this is through Canva and we basically combine um, Moat and Canva together. And so this classroom, as you can see, is called Motivational um, Messages. And we really thought of this idea, especially with SEL um, being so important um, in schools and really providing not only just feedback that we use Moat for, but really also be able to motivate students and each other. And so we came up with um, motivational quotes that maybe teachers want to give a quote to their students um, to inspire uh, moats for students, for teachers to leave a moat message for their student. And so Alex and I have created different moat messages as well as uh, moat messages that we have that I give to uh, my teachers. Um, I know Alex has provided moat messages to his principals on um, Principal Appreciation Day. And then the bottom one is a great way for students to leave moat messages, whether to other students or to teachers. And so the one, um, those are actually my two kids on the bottom right there. Uh, so the one all the way to the right, um, 
that one, that's my son. So for Teacher Appreciation Week for both of them, um, actually, Stacey, if you don't mind, if you want to just, if you don't mind quickly playing this that. Day, Rusty, this is Max. I just wanted to say how thankful and happy I am to have you guys as my teachers. And you make every day such a good time. And I hope you guys understand how good you guys are. So that's my son, Max. He's a fifth grader. And so he just adores his two teachers. And so he really wants to provide a moat message for Teacher Appreciation uh, Week in order to give to them so that way they can hear his moat message. And then as you can see across the room, Alex and I have different links that will not only provide moat messages, but we have um, up to the top right-hand corner, we have for Spotify um, to have uh, relaxing music. Um, that we also have the uh, Mentimeter on the bottom. So we have the sand art, the sand um, bucket right there. So that's, this is sand. So this is, there's so many great ways that we can integrate SEL and Moat together. And so we felt that this could be a great way for teachers to, for now until the end of the school year, to really bring um, that connection uh, with their students, especially as you know, students that may be going through some harder times, these messages could really help give them a boost. And Alex, I'm not sure if you want to speak a little bit about that. Uh, we'll, we'll be sharing out this template this week. We, we hope people can make use of it, personalizing their own moat messages in Canva, embedding it in, and then they'll be able to make this. You know, my main thought when Lois and I were collaborating on this was where you have those post-it notes where it's like you need a positive message, you take one. Well, I think that this is even a little bit more elevated than that, where a kid comes in and, you know, we did motivational quotes from famous, you know, inspirational individuals. And we also did our own heartfelt ones to our students, our teachers, our kids. So we, we just hope that people find this useful and that this is a great SEL uh, room as well. That's also highly accessible for students and teachers alike. Okay. Can I Add oh, yeah. in one thing that, um, you know, we were talking a bit about like the time that this can take. And I know that that can also be an overwhelming thing. And we just didn't mention that there is something called um, that, that like you can reuse these things. So you'll see um, that there is this moat book and that actually allows you to save. You can see here that you can save and reuse your notes. So, you know, so many times there's like something that's a similar thing that you wanna leave on, you know, 15 different students papers. I have honestly found that using some of these tools and moat is one specifically that actually saves you time when you get up and running with things. And then as you go the long haul over the years, I mean, you save these things and you can modify them and reuse them. And as a flipped classroom teacher, when I started making the videos, like it's very hard to edit a video, but like when Alex was showing some of his examples, you know, like you want to swap out three examples, you just swap them out on a slide and you maybe you re-record three examples because you want to improve your lesson, but you don't have to redo the entire thing. So as we're talking about, um, saving time, like this really does save time. Maybe you have to spend a little bit more time at the beginning rethinking some things, but then it, I find that it, it does actually save time. Yeah. And lots of questions, but first I'm going to go to the comments and I'll actually just put them on the screen. But before I do that, is it okay? Do we, do you still want to screen share or can I Pull back the screen sharing. Oh, okay, never mind. Magic just happened. So, uh, lots of comments from those of you joining in. And Linda says, again, love that students can leave feedback and messages. And when we talk, you know, one of the words that keeps popping up throughout our conversation today is like the relationships. And Glenn, thank you so much. I love this idea that you put in there. Uh, and it's the idea of being innovative too, right? Innovative sounds like a scary word but it doesn't have to be. It just means something new or something different. And so maybe for you to be innovative is you're going to start with Moat tomorrow because tonight you're going to spend a little bit of time figuring out one of the ways because you've gotten a lot of ideas from our panelists here uh, and people joining in that maybe you think, yeah, you know, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Or you're thinking about something that you teach where you think, how many times have I explained this same concept over the years, class after class, when now you have moat and you can do that and you can provide it. And if students want to listen to it 
or if they're in your classroom and they're not necessarily listening actively to what you're saying, they can pull that up. They know where to access it. But you've seen all of these different ways that it can be used. And so um, thanks to Glenn for the comment. And Linda, that's a very cool moat book um, also. And Glenn says he's going to try that for real. And Mel, thank you for the moat book is the bomb. Um, a great idea for that. And I am... Uh, going to bring John back up here in one minute, but I did want to ask, and this could be for any of you, but uh, kind of tying back to uh, a little bit, you know, about the accessibility and, you know, Alex, I asked you about the learning curve, maybe Lois for you, because you showed a lot of really different, we've all, you've all shown a lot of amazing ideas and very versatile can be applicable to any grade level content area. Uh, and they look so nice. So I might be asking you to create some of those for me because there was a no way that I could do it the way like how you have it set up. But Lois, for somebody who is just getting started, you know, what would you suggest would be, you know, a way that they could get started where it doesn't feel like, you know, it's the end of the year, there's so much going on, this is just too much, like, what is something simple that might, you know, one, obviously promote accessibility, but be something that, that it can help an educator to ease into and give it a try, especially as the year starts to wind down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my biggest suggestion that I always give to teachers is start off where you are using a platform that you are familiar with. So if you use Google Workspace for Education, it's a great way to incorporate whether it's in Google Forms or Google Classroom, and even in a Google Classroom, and I've done this as an example to um, the teachers I work with, is because once you have Moat as your extension, that Moat icon is right there in Google Classroom. So what is a great way to welcome your students every morning mm -hmm. by clicking on that Moat icon and just give a welcome message to your students in Google Classroom, and it's a great way to also connect with them. So my biggest suggestion is, you know, pick that platform that you are using quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. In our district, we are a Google district. So it's a great way to add, uh, whether it's in slide, in Google Classroom, you name it. And at, that's what's happening. It's like little by little, they're starting to add it because right. they see, oh, this is right here. It makes it easy. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, one second before I, I pull John back up. I'm going to ask Stacy one question and, you know, I'll, I'll pull John back up in the process, but the, the relationships that we've been talking about accessibility and social emotional learning and the collaboration. And so, you know, when we're looking, you know, as teachers for me for, in Spanish, I, I realize not all of my students are going to go on and become Spanish teachers. Uh, the language possibility with this is great for my students who are building their skills, but then also being realistic about, you know, how can I best pre pre prepare them for the future when it comes to SEL, you know, that collaboration, whether or not students want to work together or to give each other feedback or to leave each other messages and so forth. Uh, that the collaboration is essential because in the future, they're going to have to work with others. And so what can you offer to a teacher who says, okay, now it's the end of the school year. Uh, I'm dealing with, you know, students are not necessarily like wanting to do certain activities or they just want to get the year finished and my student engagement has totally dropped down. I want to get them to work together because we know the, the importance of relationships. Do you have any tips or suggestions or like maybe one idea that says, yep, try this with Moat? Yeah, so that's where I feel like the power of sometimes just like students being able to talk to one another. But if they're working at home, right, like how do we capture that? Maybe they're going to hop on. A, you know, Google Meet or a Zoom call or even the good old fashioned phone together. But um, it's actually way easier if they can do that all in the Google Slides itself, not to mention that it can be documented for the teacher to see some of that collaboration. So that's another aspect that you can think about when you're grading, you know, like, how do we grade on process? Here's another example of how we can look at that process and see how students are contributing and working together. So in the comments, basically just think about it as this is a simple example. It can be on a Google doc. It can be on Google slides in the comment section, instead of them just like talking on some other platform, having them talk directly in the comment section, they can type and they can add in moat messages so they can add in their voice notes right there, add it in, tag their classmate, then their classmates going to get that message and respond when they're able to. So they don't have to be working on it at exactly the same time. Mm -hmm. I think that's just really powerful. Again, it's documented. And if you grade on it too, so that you're able to give the 
shift the grading from just like that final product to some of this process, you are sending the message that this is really important to them and you're able to shift up what grading looks like, which is a whole nother topic. Yeah, it is. And we might need another couple of hours to delve into that, but we'll save that for another time because without waiting any longer, we're going to bring John back to join us who hasn't really left. He's just been hanging out with us a little bit. So John, welcome back. And uh, I know you've been listening and learning and I'm just amazed as, as well as, as everybody who's joining in by the information, the wealth of information from this panel. And just think of how much we have all learned in this hour that we have spent together. And there is so much more beyond that. But John, I heard that you may have something else that you might want to to add yeah, to this conversation. Yeah, um, yeah, I definitely would. But before I do that, I just want to say a sincere thank you to um, all three of you for such a wonderful demonstration of so many different ways that you have used Moat with your students in your classroom and for the greater good of your learning communities. It's been really inspirational. I've been I've been hovering in the virtual backstage uh, uh, room. So um, yeah, it's been great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Are you ready, John, to share? I am ready. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So this is just a super quick uh, touch upon. Um, actually, one of our most popular um, popular integrations, I know Alex touched upon it, but this is how we enable both the creators and respondents of a Google form to add their voice. Um, super easy to do. This is in the creator view. So this is myself. Most typically as a teacher, I've set this form up. This is just one that we actually have available and we've been sharing this week as part of five, activi five activities that we're sharing that you could maybe do at the end of this school semester. This, this one is focused around um, end of semester reflection. So I have inserted my voice at the start of the form just so my students can hear my voice to understand a little bit more about what this form's all about. And of course, I can also add my voice to individual questions. Now, what does it look like for the student? Well, if I jump onto the student view here, I can listen to my teacher's voice. Hi, everyone. I would love... Uh, I can read a transcription of the voice note, both really, really helpful. And what I can also do, though, you will notice, uh, here's one I made earlier, is I can actually respond using my voice to questions. So great, great both in the pastoral context, or in this case, uh, the use is providing feedback for my teacher, but also really valuable in, in the world language classroom. Uh, there are lots of examples. You only have to jump onto socials to see these. Um, but I would definitely recommend, if you haven't, just exploring the power of voice within one of my favorite tools, uh, Google Forms. That was it, Rochelle, thank you. And that was another great use of Moat. And uh, Linda says, I'll put it up on the screen there. That's great that you can include voice responses to a survey for the littlest learners. Uh, and I agree. And we have another comment that came in a little bit earlier too. Nice for saving time, like you can reuse them. Great UDL strategies, which also super important. And so as we wind down here, we thank everybody for joining in with us live, or if you are catching us because you're watching the recording, because it will be available multiple Facebook communities, Twitter, LinkedIn, and on YouTube, of course, we'll be sharing it out repeatedly because we know not everybody can join in at the same time dealing with different time zones, but we are thankful for your time here with us whenever it was that you joined in. And as a thank you for everybody for, as we know, it's a special week, I think this week, right? It's Teacher Appreciation Week. And so with that, we have a giveaway. And to share what you have to do, pop it on the screen, you have a chance. You could win a copy of a book or moat license. And what you've learned today, there's a lot that you can do with the moat license. You could definitely read the books too, but uh, just going to say that if you want to, and you should want to join in the giveaway, a couple of things that you need to do. We would want for you to tag... Uh, just Moat HQ on Twitter, and you can tag me so I can see it as well and keep track. If you're not joining on Twitter, then of course we see your comments on LinkedIn, on YouTube, and in the Facebook communities. And let us know, you know, how are you using Moat? Um, what's an idea that you came up with? Are you going to start using it? Or even like, let's say you go into school tomorrow and you're like, yes, I'm doing this today. Let us know what it is that you did, how it went for you. Uh, for me, I love to hear from the students as well what their ideas are. And, you know, what the impact was for them. So I think, you know, any of those things would be great because we're always learning and growing together. And I want to share Linda's comment. 
Yes, me too, Linda. Absolutely. So much from this amazing panel. But we will take a look at all of your responses and do a random name picker. Or maybe Alex can do something magical because he has all of these different ideas. But uh, and we will we will pick some winners to win a licenses, a license to moat, or a copy of the book, which I will be be sending out. So again, thank you to John for the opportunity to join in, and to all the panelists here, Lois, Alice, Alex, and Stacy, and everybody who joined us in the comments. We hope that you learned a lot. Uh, I know I agree. We could have spent a lot more time. This could be like a three hour you know, webinar, but for some of us that aren't necessarily on Eastern or West Coast time or anywhere in between, might be a little late in the evening. So uh, thanks again to everybody. And we hope that you will share and retweet this on Twitter and all the socials where you are seeing that it now the, the live has ended and connect with all the panelists here as well as Moat and John and don't hesitate to reach out for questions. So anybody have any last words before we officially end for today? Just thank gratitude you again for the opportunity. So, <laughs> absolutely, just thank you again for the opportunity of being a part of this great platform, growing with it. I really hope people take something away from this tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity for us to be able to share our passion for Moat. It's an amazing platform that just keeps getting better and better. Mm -hmm. I could not agree more. Okay. And with that, make sure that you share the discussion with your PLN, other communities on social, because we want to connect with and learn from you. So with that, we will say goodbye for now. And we look forward to seeing your responses and tweets or any comments on social. Have a great rest of your evening or a happy Thursday, depending on where you are joining us from. And we will see you out there in Twitterverse or somewhere in socials. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. We'll see you.